Okay, this tutorial, we're just going to have another wee look at the periodic table. So, let's get started. Alright, so the periodic table. Uh, this is again, like I said, just basically a list of elements. Now just a quick recap, you'll remember we said that they, they go in, uh, they're in order of size. So starting here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Okay, so they're increasing in size. So we read across, uh, and basically the atomic number at the top here, all right, is the atom number. So atom number 3, lithium, has atomic number 3. And that also tells us how many protons it has, if you think back to the first tutorial. So lithium is atomic number three, um, that's because it's got three protons. So it's the number of protons that tells you which element it is. Cool, but you'll notice the periodic table is kind of a funny shape. It's not actually just a list. So if we were going to list the elements in order of size, why not just write them down the page? One, two, three, four, right? Just in a long list. Why are they in this funny table shape? Well, they're actually in this table because scientists realized when they were starting to investigate some of these elements that some of them sort of behaved in a similar way. So, these are what we call groups. So the columns going up and down of the periodic table are basically chemical groups or families. These are elements that behave in a similar way. They have similar chemical properties. That means they react with similar things. They look quite similar or they have similar uh, uh, physical properties as well. But especially the way they react, those chemical properties, they behave in very similar ways. And in year 10, we'll look in a lot more detail about why that actually is. But for now, the group, a column, all you need to know is that they have similar properties. So group 18, looking at the one on the end here, is what we call the noble gases. These are gases that are all really unreactive. If we come back across here, group 1 are all really, really reactive metals. Um, so guys, the groups coming up and down, the columns, like group 1 here, group 2 over here, okay, all right, some of these other groups are down this end. Uh, each column is a group of elements that have similar properties. Now the rows are called periods, and that's where the periodic table gets its name from. So a row is actually called a period. Now the elements in the same period, in the same row, have very little in common. The only, the only thing that, that the only trend we, we can really note, note there at this stage is that they get one more proton as we go from left to right. So boron, and then carbon, then nitrogen. So carbon is one more proton than boron. Nitrogen is one more proton. Oxygen is one more. Fluorine has, e has one even more. Okay, so guys, as we read across, they're just getting slightly bigger. They've got one more proton than the, than the element before it. Okay, key thing there guys, just be, all you really need to know is that the columns up and down are groups, and the rows left to right, we call those periods. Now you also notice the colours on my table here. And I recommend, if you haven't done this yet, in your book, I want you to get a pen and put a staircase from boron down across like this. So just imagine a staircase, imagine boron standing on top of the first, the, the top step. Silicon standing on the second one, okay? So boron stands on the first step and there's a staircase going down from boron. What the ones on the left are is these are actually all metals. And the ones on the right are all non-metals. Now the yellow ones kind of on the boundary are a little bit in between. They've got some properties of metals, some of non-metals, so we call those metalloids. You don't really need to worry about those ones this year, um, but basically just be aware of that staircase, and the ones on the left are considered metals, and the ones on the right are non-metals. Now hydrogen up here is actually an exception. It's on the metal side, it often behaves like a metal in some chemical reactions, but it's really not a metal. 
If you look at hydrogen, it's a gas, it's not shiny, it doesn't look anything like a metal. So just while we're talking about that, metals gen generally have these characteristics. They're solid at room temperature, except the only exception there is mercury. Uh, they're shiny, they're malleable. Um, that means that they can be hammered into a shape. Malle malleable means basically you can bend it without breaking it. Ductile means it can be drawn into wires, so we can stretch it without breaking it. Um, and it conducts heat and electricity. The metalloids, the ones in the middle, in the middle, just have properties or characteristics that are in between those of metals and nonmetals. So some of them do conduct electricity, but only under certain conditions. And some of them are, are still are shiny like a metal, but they're also brittle. They're not really very bendy. Nonmetals. So a, a lot of these are gases. Uh, bromine, I think, is the only liquid at room temperature. Um, but they're usually dull. They're not usually shiny. And they're brittle, which means if we try to bend them, they will snap or crack or break. Um, and they're not malleable or ductile. So that's, that's kind of just saying, that, again, that they're brittle. They, they will break or crack when we try to bend them or stretch them. Cool. So basically, guys, just wanted to clarify uh, the organization of the, the periodic table there. And making a note of the fact that these are metals and these ones are non-metals and that's that dividing line, the staircase, is actually going to help you uh, when it comes to naming or writing formulas um, for the elements. So it's definitely worth learning that. Cool, I hope that helped and good luck for your test.